I'm going to try something different with this, um, with this. I'm going to try to keep some of the old text and then I'm going to add in some new pages. Um, so I have some scrapbook paper here. Um, lots of different scrapbook paper. Probably won't use all of it. Um, I should actually grab a couple music sheets, I suppose. But uh, I have music sheets in the transparency pack. So these, I'm not going to take the time to coffee dye these. Uh, some, a lot of the pages are double sided, some of them aren't. But since we're going to be doing art journal in them, uh, they will get covered, right? And we don't want to make this so full that we can't um, you know, build up and layer our, our images in there and things like that. So anyway, I'm talking in circles. No, I think I'm doing okay. <laughs> this is gonna be a little hard without swoopy. Uh, kind of sad about that. This is a lot of paper to cut, but um, I'm gonna try to, I think just cut it with the ruler and get it down to about the right size. So, okay, let's get down. Let's get to the table. All right, we'll chat soon. Bye. So for these signatures, I'm using the Tim Holtz ideology. Uh, this is the paper stash. And it's a double-sided paper, as you can see. So I'm kind of doing this a, a quick and easy uh, way so that I can just get this journal built quickly. The last time I built journals, I coffee dyed everything. I got all sorts of different papers and maps and all sorts of stuff. Um, I do really enjoy how these are turning out. So the first thing that I did was I took the paper and I cut it down to the width here, or the length, I guess, it's the length. And then I went ahead and I cut everything. I actually stitched them together, just doing a quick, simple stitch, which I'll show you here in a minute. And uh, then I cut them once they were all folded and held together. So I have a very, very clean signature here. This, I'm doing five pages, one, two, three, four, five. So it makes 10 pages in this complete signature. Look at how gorgeous that paper is though. I think this is from a, um, this is from a different pack. This might be from a, a Gypsies maybe. Um, but here is another one that I've made up. Again, this was just craft cardstock, but you could very easily use that. You can use regular scrapbook paper. Um, we will be doing processes over the top of it. So even if you have white paper on one side, it's fine. This is just me being particular and wanting to have some really gorgeous paper to work with. Um, which it might be a little bit hard to cover it up. <laughs> I haven't really art journaled before. So this is going to be a new thing for me and I'm really truly looking forward to it. So I've made Four signatures, right? So I these are the full 12 inches across. I've cut them down to this is about seven and uh, three quarters. So this needs a little bit more of a trim off the top here. You can see it's still uneven. And uh, and then I will cut this to the five inches wide here, right there. So this will get trimmed, and this one will get trimmed. Now this one, I still needed to stitch together, so I thought I would do that with you real fast. I kind of love these old stogie guys. Um, so I don't know where my owl is, owl, A W L, my pokey thing, uh, and it's kind of frustrating that I can't find it. And this particular needle is not super sharp here. Let's see if I can find a sharper one. These are part of the uh, bookmaking. Uh, set that I have listed on the Amazon links. I don't have it listed on all of the Amazon links because I haven't used it for a while and then of course as soon as I remove it because I have too many words in my description um, then <laughs> then I need it again as soon as I remove it. That's pretty par for the course, right? Okay, so how I'm measuring this is So you see how it's about seven and a quarter or seven and three quarters. So I'm just kind of making that um, in the middle space there. So I don't have to really go through and do just super exact, horrible, crappy measurements, right? Because uh, measuring is tough sometimes and it's not always fun. And But I do want to have these to be somewhat uniform. So what I'm doing here is, so I have that at the four. 
and I'm not really paying attention to this part. I'm just deciding to take it an inch and a half up. And even though it's not a full inch and a half, um, that gives me a good mark to go by. And then I'm taking it an inch and a half from here. So since I have those offset on both sides, evenly offset, it should all equal out to be good. Now, the other thing that's happened is I have tragically run out of the uh, string. Okay. I was just kind of going through my stash here. I think I can use this yarn. Um, boy, I'm kind of worried about taking that off. <laughs> I really don't want a really huge ball of... Uh, Okay, to do this step, oh, sorry, I think I just got some lint in my mouth. <laughs> All right, let's find out where the holes are at here. All right, we're going through this back side. So I'm doing this before I put it into the book. Um, actually, let's start here. I just want to make sure that I put my knot in the back. Now, I just put a lot of string on here because I was just like, oh, I don't want to restring things, but that, that could be not the right idea. All right, then go up over the top, go through the center. We're just doing a simple figure eight uh, slip stitch here, uh, going through here. Maybe. Come on. Going up here. All right, and then this signature, of course, is going to get more to it. All right, we don't need that to happen. I don't know how this yarn is going to work. Again, I don't have any embroidery floss, and I don't know where it is, or I don't have any. It's strange. Okay, so there, you see how I've got it both sides there, and then when I tie it, it will be here. And um, I'm just doing this for cutting reasons because I think that it gives me a much, uh, it's a lot easier than using, uh, you know, a bunch of different, mm, that might not be good, a bunch of different uh, paper clips and stuff like that. So. Now, when I put this into the book, it will get more, but it makes a pretty neat handy looking thing there. Okay, to cut this, so you guys are with me now, right? First off, you take your full sheet of scrapbook paper, double-sided scrapbook paper, you cut it to your height, and then you fold your paper, and then you do a quick, simple stitch in there, and then you come down and, uh, you know, uh, it's going to be five inches here. So, again, if we line it up on our board, one, two, three, four, five, it's going to be right here on the eight mark. If it's lined up here, and we go from eight to here, and then come out the other line, you're going to get a straight line. But what we want to make sure of here first, before we cut, is oh, well, those pages are a little bit more than five inches, aren't they? So, not that it, that's going to make that much a difference, because uh, these were all the way back into it, you know, but let's give it just another eighth of an inch there, eighth of an inch there. Now, if I had swoopy, I would be cutting these on swoopy. Uh, I have this rotary blade, which works pretty darn handy. It takes a lot to get through 10 pieces of um, double-sided scrapbook paper because it's relatively heavy. And there we go. Ta-da! It's perfect. Now I'm making these little inserts so that I can have little pocket pages. You could also do um, folder pages like I did in one of these here somewhere this one. So uh, I took the full sheet of paper and knowing that this was 
seven and three quarters. I just folded up and then trimmed what I needed to from there. So that makes another little tuck spot, another tuck spot here. So that's how I did that. So I've got one, two, three done. And here's the fourth one. And the fourth one just needs to be cut and trimmed to size. Now, I don't think I'm gonna be able to put four into here. Actually, let's look at this real fast. So you see how thick this is already. So this is 30 pages and I'll probably, okay. I think I'm not going to finish this guy, um, even though I really love the paper that is in it. Oh my God, he's after my slipper again. I'm gonna have to get mean with him. Not my slipper. Hey, Ozzy, drop. Oz. Just a second. Okay, so let's look at the book. I've already pulled out one signature out of here. And altogether, it looks like we have in this book. Come here. So we had one, then we took out number two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Might be two in there. No. So we had eight. So taking out every other one isn't going to really work very well for this. So we'll leave the one that's the closest there. We'll kind of even these guys up. We're looking for a signature, a second in from the back. Oh, there it is. See? Now, I have the last piece here. See? So I'm going to pull out that full signature, leaving the first and last pages on each side. I'm cleaning it out because I need that space. You don't want to break this string if possible. Just kind of gently pull it out. We're going to try to keep as much integrity in the book as we can. And then if we're going to take the third section out, one, two, three, four. So we're going to take out this middle section here. There it is right there. See how I'm finding the last and first pages there? See? Oh, wait. That's the last page. Okay, so there I've removed three signatures, which is where I'll put these guys in. But we also know that we're going to need more space in the book than that. I have not removed enough pages yet. So, again, pick this out. <laughs> so using the needle here does help to get these little pieces out of there. See? It just pops it right out. Okay, so that's where our three signatures are going to go. But we still need a lot more space in there. And I think I pulled one from the center of that. You know, if you look at the difference between this signature and this signature, I think I did take out a couple of pages in the centers. So I'm going to do that next here. I'm going to find this is next to the last here. Hey, kid. What? What? And so I'm going to start out with pulling out two out of the center of each signature. Okay, there's two from the back. See how we get this one here. 
because I want to stitch in these signatures also. They're very loose and I'm just wanting to reinforce the book. So there we've got one and two here. I should probably take out three. Whoops. I might have taken out three there. I did take out three out of the center. Um, you know, it probably, you know, you don't have to worry about doing a super count, um, except for when you think I'm going to go through and I'm going to glue these um, so that I'm working on two page uh, double, you know, so I'm working on doubles, which is two pages put together. So let's see here what we've got. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So, okay, let's take out three per center. So then we'll have three doubles on each side, right? So this will get glued together. This will get glued together. This will get glued together. And then we have our center. And then we'll do these two. And then... these two and these two and that should take us to the oh, these pages are so fragile oh interesting hold on here what did I do how did I get my counts off no well, I think that's right all right let's see what we've got here one two three Well, that works well, however it worked, <laughs> however it did it, it did it good. So then we're going to go and look at how gorgeous these are. Oh, those pages are beautiful. Okay. I have a feeling I also need to remove some from this first one. I'm just going to take two from here because I think I might have already taken some out. So, you know, as I go through and um, fix this up, we will... ensure that it is correct with the gluing part. One, two, three. So it's six pages on each side. So for this center one here of these pages, I do want to go through and um, stitch them in. See how the book itself is eight inches tall. So we're going to go to the center at four and an inch and a half in and an inch and a half in. There we go. Um, so basically, I know I want to do it actually from the other direction. If I had my owl, 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 how do you say the damn word? It's such a weird word. Oh, there it goes. Okay, so I'm going to start from the back here. And I do want to go through the back of this book. To me, I think that will look interesting. Ah! Please don't poke yourself like that. And I'm going to double this here. This is a very, actually this thread is probably not the best to use because it does pull apart. I like how it looks, but
Well, hopefully I won't be yanking on it too much, right? Famous last words. Let's see, I can't, I can't use that. It's way too weak. All right, I'll be right back. Okay, so let's try this again. Take two. All right, I'm using some yarn that doesn't pull apart super easy. And remember, I'm doing this so that I can strengthen the pages that are originally in here. So I'm taking it from back behind. I've got a knot in there, see? Which I could actually probably have put something there. But I can add that later too. And then out through the center up through the top. But since this is double thickness yarn, I don't think we need to do this 15 times. So then we've got a full figure eight there. Now, two choices. Uh, lace. The lace probably would have been pretty cool. The, the thing with this lace is that it's really old, and so I don't know how it would stand up, and it's flexy. So, uh, the, you know, the potential of pulling it out with me is probably pretty great. So, um, I think that looks okay, right? I might re knot those at another time, but it's sturdy and it's secure. And those are my two biggest concerns. All right, so let's find this this whole one that we took out here. Make sure we just have one left on the outside. And we're going to pull in the first one of these. Now, see how perfectly it sits in there? Hmm. Hmm. actually sits back a little bit further so uh, you can compensate and give it a little bit extra space here when you're doing it I probably cut it a little bit too short it's all right I'm not gonna go back and redo it number one and number two I don't think it looks horrible it's just I could have gotten another quarter inch of space out of there so I know I already went through and um, put a quick stitch in there so that I could string these but now I'm going back through, unstitching them, and if you don't want to do it this way, for God's sakes, don't do it this way. This is just what I'm coming up with on the fly. Make sure the pages are lined up there. It's not quite lined up, actually, because this guy should come out the exact same spot as that one. No, nope, not there. That one. <laughs> oh, goodness. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've got that hole. And then we've got this hole. That came out perfect. And then we've got this hole here. And again, that lines up great. Awesome. Okay, so now we're going to go through here. And I'm not going to tie a knot this time. I am just going to do the simple figure eight. I think I will go through and fix that first signature. It's a little bit too much. Here. There's no need for it to be, you know, industrial. It already is industrial with just what we're doing. Come on, baby. Ta-da! And then leave yourself enough space to tie a knot. Now, the problem with these is it's always hard to get it super tight, right? That's pretty good tightness. Okay, so then I'm going to leave that there. And I'm going to go back through and fix this one. And, uh, see? Pretty cool, huh? 
And we might actually glue that page to that and this page to this. We'll see what we need to do there. Um, maybe even a piece of deli sheet over that to kind of uh, work on that seam a little bit. But that works pretty cool. Look at that. Okay, so I'm just going to continue on uh, putting these other pieces in and um, then I will come back and, and show you the goods. Okay, bye. Hello again, artists. Okay. So, this got pretty bulky back here. I don't think I would use um, yarn again for that. Um, <clears throat> but it's interesting. Uh, part of me just wants to kind of give it a haircut. I think it'd be kind of different. But, uh, so, what I've done, you watched me pull the pages out, and I've reinforced, reinforced every single signature with the yarn. So by taking out these center signatures, like I did, it's given me quite a bit of space. I will, of course, uh, probably be putting some sort of covering over the top of this. And uh, although this is kind of cool, this little Neptune guy here. What was this book called? Can't remember. The Mill on Mad River. Oh, that's a horse. A little Neptune guy. That's interesting. Um, let's see. Okay. I'm oh, sorry. I get distracted. So this is, this was just kind of a quick and dirty way to make, um, an art journal. And by using the double-sided scrapbook paper, the beautiful Tim Holtz paper worked out really well. I think those pads of paper go for about $19. I think I got mine at Joann's. So, you know, use your coupons on them or wait for the, you know, your Tim Holtz sale where, you know, they go 40% off, I think, once a month. So, there is that. This isn't out of that batch, I don't think. But. Okay, so now what I'm going to go through is I'm actually going to prep the whole book before I start to work on it. And... So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start gluing pages together, um, two or three together to make really sturdy, um, you know, leaving these as my center always. And I just want to make um, very stiff, heavy duty pages so I'm, you know, so I can work on it, right? We want to be able to... Sorry. Now, do I want to glue that to that page? I think I'll leave it like that. I might, because I think this would be a great work page. <clears throat> I might put a piece of deli sheet over the top of it. Maybe. Right? Right? You know what I mean, Jelly Bean? Okay. So after I do this throughout the whole book, because I only have generally, um, three pages that I'll need to glue together on each side of each signature. So it should go pretty quick. Um, and if you don't want to prep your whole book at once, by all means, don't. Um, I'm just wanting to have, I just want to be able to start to work on it. And here's my center, so what do I have here? Okay, so I have three on this side. I wonder where my squirt bottle is. Oh, it's way over there. Probably be easier to do this with a squirt bottle. And definitely I'm getting into here. I do want to make sure that I'm <clears throat> reinforcing that binding as much as possible at all times. See through there. Yeah. This is an old, fragile book. Now you don't want it to stick to the other pages, so I guess we have to watch out for that. But I don't generally use books that are this um, unstable for altered books. <clears throat> I, I generally use books that have a really nice stability to them. So. 
because your book's going to fall apart anyway, but you want to give it as much of a chance of a good long life as possible, right? Okay, so I'm just going to keep doing that. I'm just going to go through and glue my pages together. And um, I think right there, I'm definitely going to glue a piece of... Uh, Let's put a strip of this in there right off the bat. Will it stay like that? Most likely not. But I think it would look great and it gives us extra texture, extra background, and we're reinforcing the book. Always our primary goal. Reinforce, reinforce, reinforce. Now, if you have a different, um, um, you could just use a, a pad of paper if you want to. You don't have to go through and make a special journal book. Um, you know, there's no obligation to that. You can do this <clears throat> with whatever you have on hand, right? But oh, I think this will make a really, really cool art journal. Um, you know, sometimes things with a, st a stronger paper would be, you know, good. Um, you could even get a watercolor spiral bound thing, something like that would work well, would work really well. So this is just kind of a, a way to make a fast, fast journal. Well, look how pretty that is with that. So now that I've done this centerpiece here like that, I'm going to have to let that dry. And um, I think that's it, guys. Uh, you've, you've seen how I'm going to go through and glue the two pages or three pages together, whatever it needs. Um, I'm going to go in and reinforce what I can just right off the bat. Uh, you can reinforce. You don't have to use it with deli sheet. You can reinforce with cheesecloth. You can reinforce with muslin, some uh, lightweight fabric or paper. Uh, you know, this might need more even after this. It's possible, right? Um, okay, well, that's, that's how I made this journal. I hope you like it. And, uh, I hope you guys decide to journal with me. I would, I would love to have, um, your company while I'm making these things. And let me know how you feel about the process. Um, you know, because if it's not something that you guys don't want to do, then, you know. Well, tough poop. <laughs> you will want to do this, right? <laughs> all right. I don't and, know. Um, anyway, just, uh, you know, all the thoughts get going when, uh, when I have a blank canvas in front of me, right? <laughs> okay, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you take the time to um, come up with some sort of journal for yourself, whether you're using um, a pre-made one, a, a pre-bought one. I have three available still. Um, or if you do this super fast, easy process, I mean, this was, considering that I've made a handmade journal, this was relatively uh, easy. You know, this went a lot faster than those other journals that I made. You know, but I didn't have to coffee dye. I didn't have to, um, you know, it doesn't have the variety of all the music notes and all the different papers, but it has, it's, it's going to have a good feel once I start to create on it also. I hope you have a great evening and we will chat soon. Love you guys. And thank you so much for being here. All right. Mwah. <laughs> Bye.